When it comes to manifesting, I invite you to let go of time. Again, wherever we're like, I need to manifest this 2,000 pounds and I need it in the next seven days because blah, 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 blah. What we actually create is a limitation. And it's driven, the manifestation, the asking, the request is driven from a place of lack. I need to have money to do blah by X a point in time. The universe is vast and it is really busy bringing you all of the things that you want. But the reason that it doesn't come to us isn't because there's anything wrong. It's because we're not yet vibrationally ready. And sometimes the things that we're manifesting, the universe has got something a hundred times bigger than what it is you're asking for. So I invite you to let go of time frames when you're manifesting anything, but particularly around, around money. Trust the universe that it will deliver what you're asking for when you're vibrationally ready to receive it. You have to do the work. You have to, have to, have to do the work on transforming the resistance in all areas around your wealth. And sometimes it's really complicated. Sometimes it's straightforward. Sometimes it's really complicated. But you have to do the energy work on shifting what's standing in your way in order to create the space and lift your vibration to that frequency Tasha was talking about to be able to receive it. And that means letting go of that heaviness. They're like sandbags that are holding you down. Imagine your vibration is down here, but the money you want is way up here. You're not going to meet that here because you've got that massive gap between where you are and when you, where your money is, where the frequency of wealth is. Be generous in everything you do. I don't mean give all of your money away and leave yourself skin at the end of the month at all, but you can be generous in so many ways, generous with your time, generous with your support, generous with your knowledge, generous with your expertise, generous with what you do never at a point where it's a, a detriment to you but one of the things for me particularly it is so important I've never ever ever been and sometimes it's probably my downfall I've never been one of those people that's like I'm only going to tell you the top three things you know when you go on those webinars and they're like I'm going to tell you the top three things that are blah 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 but I'm going to keep the other seven that you really need to know behind a secret door I'm like I uh, there is nothing I cannot share with you other than the only limitation being time that we have. But I never believe that knowledge should be locked away in any particular place because it's so important. Like, it doesn't matter. I could literally tell you everything now. I could tell you all of it. But it's the implementation. It's the putting it into practice that's actually going to create the change in your life. Does that make sense? Can someone nod or give me a thumbs up? I can see a few of you. It's the implementation. The knowledge is powerful. And yes, it's important. And yes, it helps. But it's the putting it into practice. It's the doing of it. And that's the thing most people don't do. We can spend a lot of time doing calls like this. And, and, I'm, and I know that these create shifts. But it's when you actually do the work, that's where the true transformation comes from. And I love to teach, to be fair. But transform how you feel around money. So not just only working on the feet, on the heaviness or the lightness, like but work on your emotions around money. If you're fearful around money, if you get depressed around money, if you feel powerless around money, if you feel if you feel overwhelmed by money, someone was saying, like, I can't I can't even think about managing that and having that level of responsibility. All of these are emotions which are keeping that money away. So these are, and I'll share the screen with you, because these are some of the different aspects of working on money, which is wherever you've probably tried to manifest money before. And I know this won't be the first and I'm sure it won't be. the Well, I hope it will be the last because now you've found AM. <laughs> but most people have done, you know, some kind of money manifesting or working on the law of attraction thing and you get some results from it. But 
very often it's either short-lived or you work on one tiny thing like you might get a win you might get like 500 quid or a thousand pounds or ten thousand pound whatever it might be a win instead of finding a way to completely shift your frequency around wealth where it's just open and abundant and it's more like it's coming at you through a funnel oh it's just this constant flow of money coming towards you so when we think about working on money stuff these are all the different aspects you need to think about there's your energy system the work that we were talking about on monday like your chakras your aura your head your heart your hara your aura layers all of the things that have happened to you in the past all the resistances all the reversals all of the thoughts, the beliefs and the patterns, all of the emotions that you hold around money, all of the situations you've been through around money, your generational patterns, meaning the stories energetically that have been passed down through your family line around money and wealth and abundance and lack or having enoughness or not having enoughness, past lives, if that resonates with you or other lifetimes that you've been through, often have traumatic money stories. Knowing your worth. One of the biggest challenges I see, and we're going to do a little, we're not doing the worth tonight, but the same exercise can be used in this. One of the biggest things I see is most people undervaluing themselves, undercharging for what they do. They're scared or limiting themselves with the hourly rates that they charge. And this was when I had my wellbeing center some 15, 20, 15, 15 odd years ago, that was the one thing that I found always kept me limited and was the reason that I actually stopped doing client sessions one-to-one because it doesn't matter how much you charge per hour, you are always limited by the time that you have. And when you're working in that way, you are end up kind of living hand to mouth because you are dependent on the next person saying yes to having a session with you in order for you to earn your money. And I, and I knew in my heart, I couldn't make the impact that I wanted to make in the world, working with clients one-to-one at an hourly rate. It was never going to allow me to make the difference. I didn't know obviously back then what I would be doing now, but that's one of the biggest things that I see change makers stuck with and not understanding how to shift a the money that they can create, but B, most importantly, the number of people's lives that they can impact. And sometimes it just comes around to practical ways of creating the work that you do and working in a way that's abundant for everybody. Deservingness and worthiness, being open to receiving, the practical aspects of understanding money. We are never taught in school how to manage money, what to do with the money that you get, how to make the money that you get work for you. And I don't mean sticking it in a freaking ISA that's going to give you 0.0002% a year. Finding ways to make the money you make, make more money for you, because that is what money wants to do. Finding ways to pay off debts that we have without allowing all of your money to get spent on debts instead of creating wealth. Money attracts money. The more money that you have literally is like a magnet. So the more money you can start to create, the more money will be attracted to it and to you. Your money stories, your money traumas. And then we have all of the different aspects of money itself. How you earn money, how you feel about how you earn money, the beliefs you have around earning money, receiving money, Are you able to ask for money? How do you deal with keeping money? As soon as you get money, do you spend it like there's a hole in in your pocket? Or are you one of those people who's a massive saver and you just end up keeping all of your money and hoarding it all because you're scared or worried or thinking about it for a rainy day and you never let the money of energy of money flow freely from you? Do you have challenges around the way that you spend money? When you spend money in a shop, do you hand it over with gratitude Or are you like, oh, shit, I'm not sure if it's that card or that card that's going to work. Like, what's your energy around spending money when you pay your bills? Are you saying it with thanks and gratitude? Or are you like, oh, 
Yeah, I've got this to pay and I've got that to pay. And are you hiding from the letters that are coming through your door? How do you deal with money that you owe people? Do you hide? Do you pay it off? Do you pretend it doesn't exist? How do you deal with money that people owe you? So all of these, <laughs> I'm sharing this with you to show where and why the money thing may have been a challenge before, because it isn't just as simple as I am ready to allow myself to manifest the next million pounds into my life. We need to work on all of these different pieces of the puzzle.